A complaint was filed by the former interim governor, Alan J. Stevens, against the governor-elect Everett Hawkins Chagrin, arguing that he usurped the position in the administration when he had not yet been officially appointed. Alan J. Stevens, who was interim governor, brand governor Ever Hawkins Chagrin as usurper, to a complaint filed before the Departmental Comptroller's Office, the Regional Attorney General's Office, and the San Andreas Sectional Prosecutor's Office, in which he placed a subject request for control and monitoring of officials of the Departmental Government of the Archipelago of San Andreas, Old Providence, and Santa Catalina. Within his arguments in the lawsuit, the former official indicated that the irregularities that were occurring with some officials regarding the disregard of his orders to carry out administrative procedures should be reviewed. On the other hand, he indicated that the governor-elect should abstain for giving directive to any government official until he was officially appointed, and he also cited Article 425, which refers to the encroachment of public functions, indicating that the secretaries were ignoring their duties with the entity and usurping public functions by means of blocking calls, withholding documentation, and suspending procedures. In response to the complaint, the governor-elect Everhack and Chagrin announced that he will not give any statements. And after the document where the former governor in charge, Alain J, requested control and follow-up in the activities of the governor's office was made public, it was also known that he is on sick leave. Tele Islas learned that Jay Stevens faced some health issues due to blood pressure. It should be noted that the former governor in previous occasions had issues with his health as a result of having been infected with COVID-19 in previous months repeatedly when he was the interim governor at the Coral Palace. He had to be answered for casualties in his health. This new agency has tried to communicate with Jay to know his current health status, but it has not been possible. However, Tele Islas News will be attentive to this news event and open its microphone to Alan J. Stevens. And UNESCO's Director of Peace Affairs and Senior Guide, who is an African and lives in Washington, arrived on the island a few hours ago. On the other hand, he's here for human rights issues and to follow up on the case of Governor-elect Everett Hawkins Chagrin. With, the, with his arrival, the government hopes that resources will be obtained to support sports, education, children, and some environmental issues so that the Biosphere Reserve can be recovered. He is coming to follow up on my case as a member of the network of Afro-descendants of the world, and he is coming to support us with international cooperation in terms of resources. In addition, to accompany us to the municipality of Old Providence and Santa Catalina, Tomorrow, we will have an agenda with him where we will talk with some invited people from the Rizal community and I will take him and the mayor to make a tour with the fishermen and to those areas that had problems and that are under reconstruction in Old Providence. Among the expectations that the governor has with the visit of UNESCO Commissioner and the Latin American Commission of Human Rights that will be arriving tomorrow is that they can give precautionary measures to the Colombian government regarding and in other news, this afternoon, the march against the tax reform took place here in the archipelago. This situation caused traffic vehicular congestion. Outside of the Coral Palace, with the accompaniment of the Ombudsman Office, the concentration was held around the national strike against the tax reform in the archipelago department. With banners and chants, the departmental strike committee and students showed their rejection of the law of sustainable solidarity. As the national government has named this reform, the island community expressed itself. Viva la justa lucha I am a student. I am also Colombian. I am San Andres. What is happening in the country hurts me. We are marching against the tax reform. We do not want another package deal from Duque. We are marching against the murders of social leaders, of the forgotten San Andres and the forgotten old Providence, the Plan 100. We are still waiting for it. We are marching for our rights and because we want to be heard. 
La mayoría de los que estamos aquí son jóvenes. Most of us who are here are young people who, with the sacrifice of our parents, have gone beyond the tax reform that they believe only affects the continent. San Andres is a key focal point. Here we do not pay value-added tax, but when you go to a supermarket and you see the high cost, it is not only because of the tax reform, but also because of the bad practices of the national government with San Andres. No apoyo la reforma tributaria. I do not support the tax reform because of the things they are putting in it. That 19% value-added tax that they want to impose, we do not pay that in San Andres, but it affects us as students when we leave the island. At the beginning of the march, the SMAD was in charge of guarding the mobilization with the purpose of avoiding alterations to the public order near the Coral Palace. It is worth mentioning that from very early morning, the mobilization was announced, but the authorities did not inform about the route and the road closure that will be made during the march, generating traffic and jams in the New Val Avenue, 20 of July Street and the Americas, causing trauma in the flow of vehicles for several minutes. Blue agents were in charge of restoring order to the vehicles lower later. And after the approval of the draft ordinance on the mixed economy in the departmental assembly, deputies asked the elected governor, Everett Hawkins, not to sanction it. Remarks and requests for objection to draft ordinance 010 were sent to the governor, Everett Hawkins, chagrin by deputies of the departmental assembly. This ordinance authorized the creation of a mixed economy company to support activities associated with the development of an intelligent and sustainable territory in the archipelago department of San Andres, Old Providence, and Santa Catalina. The project was approved in third debate in the departmental assembly with six votes in favor and five against. The deputy Margit Bandera stated the reason for her negative vote. Es un proyecto que realmente es. It is a project that is really interesting, but the big problem that exists is that it is a project where we cannot continue giving away what we have, in which the department gives everything to a company for 30 years. That is an act of irresponsibility on behalf of the government and some deputies who approve it. According to Bandera, she is conscious that in matters of telecommunication and technology, the department is not on the best terms. However, a deep study should be made on how this alliance will be made. We have to have a broad knowledge in respect to what is going to be done, how this company would be associated with the department. We know that the department is involved in a 52 percent, and we do not want to continue making mistakes that at a given moment will cost us more. Regarding the Office of Circulation Control and Residence, OCRE, and how it is linked to this project, the deputy said that it is necessary to use technology urgently in the OCRE to digitize the information, but the processes must be done on other manner. And another new several captures occurred on the island in recent days. Some of them correspond to criminals with prison sentences. Three men and a woman who were wanted for a crime of trafficking, manufacture, or carrying off narcotics were captured by the police authorities of the island. The fast took place during a raid in the Modelo neighborhood during the early morning of the April 22nd, resulting in the capture of Liagwin Berrio Giraldo, Joyce Rafael Ramos Salgado, and Ladies Riz Riz, who were found with 50 grams of marijuana. Luis Miguel Dimas Cervantes was captured in Cartagena for the same crime. On the other hand, a 20-year-old man was captured for illegal possession of firearm in the Cliff neighborhood during a control and search activity by the National Police. For the same offense, two men, one 53 years old and the other 55 years old, were apprehended and found in possession of firearm who were also captured for violence against a public servant. The fires occurred in Simpson Well neighborhood during a fight where one of the main fires shoots into the air with a 38 caliber revolver. During the police procedure, there was a struggle between the inhabitants of the sector, leaving one of the policemen who was present at the site injured. And the Municipal Council of Disaster Risk Management yesterday conducted a tour of the houses that are at risk being located in eroded coastal areas and near streams. 
In order to determine the state of vulnerability of families with homes in coastal areas or close to gullies, the Municipal Council for Risk Management yesterday visited several places to evaluate the possibility of relocation for these families. To see which are the vulnerable places, which are the houses that are in these vulnerable areas and which accept their relocation or to be moved. We were able to identify these places places. In some of them, it is very evident the imminent risk that they are in. The technical part made some relocation suggestions. The visit was carried out in company of experts from the DEMAR and the National Unit for Disaster Risk Management. With the report generated from this, the mayor will have to make the pertinent decisions, which could be the purchase of land to be able to relocate these people who are at imminent risk, whether it is because they are in areas of low tide or because they are near the creeks. They visited places such as Comsi, Salt Creek, Rocky Pine, and the houses on the banks of the Gamadi Creek in Batam House. The recommendation of the technical team is to carry out studies in different zones that will allow us to have a better evaluation of the risk. It is important to note that the relocation of families in risk zones have been evaluated for years. However, the community has been reluctant to this idea. And the fishermen that are gathered in a peaceful protest at the Fish and Farm Cooperative have now blocked the entrance to the Coast Guard camp. 50 days of peaceful protests have been carried out by the fishermen at the Fish and Farm Co-op next to the Navy's camp in Old Providence. Today they decided to take one more step and block the entrance since they say that time is passing and the Navy have not yet evacuated the premises. We try to do the thing a Pacific way, come here every time doing the thing how it's supposed to go by law. Everybody come and give it the right. And for that purpose, we decide today to block off the road. The fishermen claim to have all authority to block the place because they have the commodatum on the land where they are camping. They're passing with big trucks. Everybody just passing through like they have a mind. And we are ready win this thing. And until the moment, they don't try to give us our right. So we have us to do something. Old Providence fishermen are asking for definitive solutions to this situation. The governor, the alcalde, Coralina, everybody come already and make the notice. And until this present moment, they don't do anything. So that's the reason why we have to us to come into agreement and do this thing to see if somebody would come forward and say directly, you all have to move and get out from there because you all are the wrong one and are supposed to move out. 